Good morning. Today we're looking at Mark chapter 13, verses 9 to 13. Here's what it says. But watch out for yourselves, for they will deliver you up to councils, and you will be beaten in the synagogues. You will be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all the nations. But when they arrest you and deliver you up, do not worry beforehand or premeditate what you will speak. But whatever is given you in that hour, speak that. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. Now a brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. And children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. So you heard it, our worst enemies will be our fellow humans, even our own family members in some cases, apparently in many cases. Those that we're trying to save will try to kill us. They will deliver you up to councils. You'll be beaten in places of worship. You'll be brought before leaders and high officials for a testimony to them. And this persecution against Christians is going to encompass all lands because this gospel must be preached to all the world before the end comes. So we're looking at a, a global persecution against Christians still to come. Now, when these things happen, we, we shouldn't be anxious. I suppose we'll be a little bit anxious. But Jesus says, you know, the Holy Spirit will tell you what you need to say. He'll tell you, he'll show you what to do and how to present yourself. He'll aid us when we make our verbal responses. It's going to be a dark time. There will be cowardice. There will be betrayal. And not just out there, but in the church. And yet, God will still have a people. Family members will testify against us and ask for us to be killed. Our own family members will support church and state against their own family. And Jesus made it so clear. People are going to hate you because of your Christian witness. Don't plan. This isn't going to happen. This is going to happen. And still, he calls you and he calls me to endure in his strength. I'm sure you've noticed these very days that we're being trained, the circumstances at the very least, if not intentionally, are training us to follow government orders. We're being told exactly when we can go in, when we can go out, etc., etc., etc. We're being trained to comply, comply, comply with government orders. We're supposed to keep our distance from each other, not touch each other, uh, not even go to a family gathering. These are things that will train us so that we instantly comply. When the government says jump, we'll say how high. The whole population, it seems, is being trained to give government obe their obedience on demand. Now, in this slide, it's quite interesting how Jesus' focus on end-time events here is a focus especially on the persecution of us as believers. That's an interesting sign of the end time. Character is formed before the crisis. The crisis just reveals what, are, what we're made out of. So now's the time. Today's the day to be uh, getting some clarity about what we will and will not obey, what we are to do and not to do. Where do we draw the line? Let me tell you, it's going to be very easy to go the wrong way. So we need to learn now. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we are not to be fearful or discouraged. We're not to cower or curl up into a little ball. But Lord, we want to trust you. Uh, no temptation is, is going to be greater than we can withstand in your strength. That's a Bible promise. Bless, I ask, the uh, person viewing this devotional and help our hearts to be totally close to you and ready to go. Help us right now to be training for whatever crisis that comes so that we'll be faithful to Jesus no matter what happens. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you haven't lived up to the faith that you thought you had, that's okay. There's still some time. So resolve that today you're going to figure out how you can draw closer and develop your faith. Let this crisis that the world's going through right now, let this crisis be an opportunity to build your faith because you'll need that faith at some time, possibly relatively soon. God be with you. Don't walk out in fear. Walk out in faith. 